I'm Hunter Jones, pro surfer and filmmaker. And I'm Lex Weinstein, surfer and environmental activist. We're going on an epic road trip exploring iconic California surf towns. Exploring the waves and people that make these towns so influential on global surf culture, past, present, and future. And of course, tasting the best burritos along the way. Welcome to Detour Surf Towns, presented by Hydroflask. It's been an interesting 18 months. Travel has been seriously restricted and I think everybody's been kind of appreciating their backyard in a whole new way. You're from here, how have you felt? Born and raised in California, surfed a lot of the waves in my hometown in LA and I wanna go explore some new waves in California. I wanna do some spot checks and meet up with the local pros and some people on the CT and the big wave world tour that have been raised in these towns and surf these waves every day. And like get the insight on what makes them so special. It's gonna be so epic to just dive really deep into the history, the culture. It'll be interesting too to meet some of the people who have been surfing these waves for 30, 40 plus years. Hold them down the lineup. You gotta get some good burritos. California is infamous for burritos. I wanna find the burrito in each town. Best and burrito in each town. Yeah, I wanna also just check out some organizations that are like pushing the mission forward. Totally, I think what it means to be a surfer today is really different than what it's been throughout history. We're facing some really dramatic changes in the world and I think it's incredible to see so many organizations and individuals prioritizing inclusivity, diversity, and environmental advocacy. So I'm definitely looking forward to that. I know. So yeah. This is gonna be rad. It's gonna be so sick. You wanna do it? Let's do it. All right. You drive down the street and this is like San Clemente. Yes. Definitely. You know, palm trees. The Spanish roofs. Pedro's tacos. Pedro's tacos. So your go-to spot in San Clemente is what? Sano? Sano for sure. It's like the best vibes. You can just pull up and there's fire pits, there's like yeah. cruisy waves, everyone's kind of doing it. What about you, Trestles? Yeah, I just go out and paddle out of lowers to get humbled by like 10 year olds, <laughs> like doing full rows. So oh, early. that's cool. I was just learning snaps at your age. <laughs> I mean, it's crazy just how many like good surfers are out on any given day. It's just so different to come surf a spot and like encompass all of those elements, like the geography and the history. Just the miracle that it, that is that stretch of beach, you know? Yeah, it's a pretty cool vibe. It's a pretty special place. San Clemente Trestles is the modern name of the ancient Ahashiman village site known as Panhe. The Ahashiman people have lived in the place we call Orange County for over 10,000 years and are still here stewarding the land alongside surfers, environmentalists, and others who care about our shared coastline. When in 1925, real estate developers Ole Hansen and Hamilton Cotton envisioned Southern California's first master plan tract home community, do you think this is what they had in mind? Of course, there was a there there centuries before San Clemente the city was born. But when developers Hansen and Cotton laid out their vision of the city, building their own personal mansions at its southern and northern boundaries, the sales pitch focused on mild weather and central proximity to LA and San Diego. Just imagine that sales pitch today, which might go something like this. Beautiful San Clemente, where along its six miles of fabulous beach, you'll find San Onofre, one of the original centers of California surf culture, and today a surfing version of Disneyland, the happiest place on earth to ride a longboard. Just a few short blocks to the north, you'll find the Trestles Complex, Church, Middles, Lowers, Uppers, and Cottons. Technically located on the Camp Pendleton Marine Base, and once off limits to surfers, Trestles, especially lowers, has become the high performance capital of California surfing, with what has to be the densest population of talent per square inch of lineup of any West Coast surf zone. Continuing our tour, we pass San Clemente beach breaks like State Park and Riviera, where the likes of the Gudaskis brothers cut their teeth in the zippy sand bottom tubes. Next up is T Street, which over the years has earned its reputation 
as the state's worst wave with the best locals. From hot old schoolers like Matt Archbald, Chris Ward, Dino Andino, and Mike Parsons, to new schoolers like Kolohe Andino, Griffin Colapinto, and Kevin Schultz, for some reason, this funky little wave keeps pumping out surf stars. The popular San Clemente Pier designates the city's north side, with sandbar high points like 409 and Lost Winds hosting devotees, all within the site of the old Ole Hansen Mansion. Marking the end of our tour of Southern California's premier planned community. If a surfer had designed it, that is. We met up with San Clemente's Greg Long, a WSL big wave world champion. Who helped illuminate what makes this stretch of coastline one of the most wave rich areas in California. So where we're at right now is the overview of the San Mateo Valley and watershed that you can't find anywhere else. And really gives perspective to the miracle of you know, the area of trussels and what a you know, geological kind of mastery that it was. A multitude of perfect waves that it's most known for, created by this incredible valley and watershed. Millions of years ago, this river was bank to bank. Uh, flowing, and that's what deposited the cobblestones that have created San Onofre, which is kind of far down out of sight there, churches, middles, lowers, uppers, all the way over to Cottons. And it's deposited them about a mile and a half out to sea into about 50 feet of water. It kind of puts into perspective, you know, how many, you know, hundreds of thousands of millions of years, you know, it took to create that. And you know, we're still enjoying it you know, to this day. So, Tell us about how San Clemente's changed, not just the wave, but the town overall since you grew up here. So I was really fortunate. Uh, there's the other San Clemente State Park. I grew up actually in there. My dad was the lifeguard supervisor and superintendent of all the kind of parks and beaches here. So that park and you know, this whole area is our you know, backyard. And the area of trestles has been preserved. And it's exactly as I you know, experienced it as a kid learning to you know, read you know, the ocean and your surroundings. That was a big part of our upbringing that you know, when we rode our bikes down, you know, we weren't allowed to just throw our wetsuit on and paddle out. You know, there was a time where you know, we were asked to sort of sit and observe you know, what's happening with the swell, the, you know, hazards. So, What does it take to get down to lowers? What's special about getting down to the wave? It's one of the few places where there's sort of a barrier to entry to surf it. There isn't just the parking lot right you know, front and center like San Onofre or you know, a lot of other waves. Christianitos is the main exit. They'll see kind of cars lined up right off the side of the freeway. You're gonna go across to the west side of the freeway, just follow a crowd of surfers walking down. <laughs> And that'll take you on one of the most beautiful kind of you know, pathways. You turn right, that'll take you out to you know, uppers and cottons, and if you keep going straight, and then you'll have the overview of lower trestles, and there's another dirt trail uh, getting down there. So yeah, either way, there's you know, a little bit of effort that goes into it. How would you say San Clemente built Greg Long into the big wave icon that he is? Yeah, that's a good question. So you know, San Clemente isn't notorious as a big wave destination. You know, I grew up literally surfing you know, you know, trestles and, and the beach breaks. There were a few individuals who had kind of progressed into big wave surfing, Mike Parsons, the McNulty's, you know, and they were traveling to you know, the other big wave destinations, so I kind of had them to look as models. More than anything, it was just my exposure to the ocean as, you know, as a child. Um, well, you could like fully see the waves. Yeah, yeah, sitting yeah. up here talking about it. So it actually looks pretty fun this morning. Yeah, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Should we get down there? Let's do yeah. it. All right. <laughs> So the main wave at Lower Trussels, everybody loves it so much because it's this A-frame. You can go left or right. The right is usually a little bit longer. The left kind of shorter, sometimes steeper, but equally fun. It's probably the most user-friendly, like fun quality wave that you know, you'll find just about anywhere. It's a very kind of centered takeoff zone. So after you do ride a wave, you know, what a lot of people make a mistake of doing is paddling straight back to the lineup. If you're paddling back out, just kind of go out and a little bit wide and you'll know, find your way back in. And the crowd at Trussell's isn't for you. Any one of the waves off to the side, you'll find them and you'll have a fun time as well. And you'll see people riding everything from high performance boards, mid lengths, you know, fishes. It's the perfect wave to try out and ride pretty much any board. So however you want to have fun, you know, this is the wave that'll make it happen. This is kind of my favorite time of year down here once the summer crowds have sort of settled and you get these 
late season swells that just aren't as busy as they are midsummer. Today, looks like shoulder, maybe a couple of head high sets, a little inconsistent, but beautiful fall morning, nice little offshore, so not too many people and a couple fun waves. literally ride any board out there best swell direction is south southwest best tide medium best time of the year sprint through fall crowd factors eye skill level intermediate to advanced definitely one of my favorite waves in california it was important for hunter and i to celebrate the unsung heroes the diehards and the ocean lovers who have been uniquely influential on the local surf culture over the decades, the saltiest locals. We met up with Brad Basham, master shaper, glasser, and a staple in the lineups of San Clemente since the 1960s. What got you into shaping? Like all surfers, interested in your equipment, and at the time when the transition between longboards and shortboards started happening, it was very hard to find shortboards. So that's when guys my age, most of them, that's when they started shaping. And then after that, I've been mainly doing the glassing, running the glass shop. Surfboard building and surfing makes sense to me. I get people that are, care about surfing that come in here. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. How long have you uh, lived in San Clemente? Since 1968. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about what San Clemente was like back in 1968? It was smaller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the core essence of downtown, still the same, and that's why people love it here. Fortunate to spend some time in your town, and we appreciate you kind of showing us around, and we are awarding the saltiest local to the most deserving people in each town. So we wanted to give you a little award, a Hydro Flask, and the saltiest cool. local award. <laughs> a little trophy for so, you. Yeah. For well years. deserved. Yeah. Of course, the water bottle I won't see because my girlfriend took it. <laughs> <laughs> we can get you another one. You just did. Oh, okay, yeah. perfect. There so you you're straight. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for coming by, guys. Yeah, we appreciate it. We really do. Hunter and I are on a quest to find the best post-surf burrito. Scoring them on the burrito meter a non-scientific and completely biased rating system based on our taste buds. And what makes them happy? Mm. It's burrito time. So I will admit, normally I go to Pedro's. I get my burrito there. Pedro's wasn't offering breakfast burritos, so we went to Cafe de Sol. You're already halfway through yours. I haven't even eaten today. <laughs> I'm quick, what can I say? It's super tasty, spoiler alert. Where is this burrito live for you? Mm -hmm. 
I mean, it's solid. There's a lot of ingredients. I'll give it a seven. Seven? It was solid. Well, this is a high seven. Grinding on these, and we're about to hit the road again. Yep. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> it's like kind of awkward and gross. Cut. <laughs> Surf culture can only be as strong as the community that builds it. In looking forward, we wanted to recognize people and organizations that are striving to create a better world through surfing. Hey, what's going on? We're here at San Ofre, getting our log on. Lex and I met up with Mark and the crew from Native Like Water, a program for indigenous youth helping reestablish a connection with the ocean, outdoor education, and cultural self-exploration. Tell us a little about what inspired you to start this organization and what Native Like Water means to you. Native Like Water is a program that works with teenagers and young adults on intergenerational cultural learning. So what we are doing is reintroducing our people, our indigenous folks, back to the ocean and ocean culture and education. I wanted to make sure that young people had access to the ocean, had access to surfing. More importantly, knew our place within this environment. The young people that I serve, it's a triumph and a victory to see them in the water again, especially after what happened historically. When we gathered, you've never probably seen that many natives on the beach again since the removal of the folks in their coastal lifestyle. Reconnecting it for us is the solution. Locally here, we have the Luceno tribe, we have some folks from Kumeyaay, the Hachimen, of course, here in Orange County. And these are the folks that we have as part of our surf team. The greatest victory over colonialism is the laughter and play of our children today, that we're still alive, that we're having fun, and that we're like getting the waves. Such a rad way to cap off an incredible day. It's amazing to see the work Mark and his team are doing, bringing us back to pre-colonization by looking at the intrinsic connection between the ocean and the first peoples of this area. It's rad to see the work they're doing to ensure that it becomes an integral part of surf culture. San Clemente lived up to all of our expectations. It's easy to see why so many incredible surfers have come out of this area and why it hosted the 2021 Rip Curl WSL Finals. Next time on Detour Surf Towns, presented by Hydroflask. We head to my West Coast home of Encinitas. Meet up with WSL Tour legend Taylor Knox. Check out the Sea and Soil Collective and meet up with Unmar de Colores. And last but not least, learn about Encinitas over the years with Tim Hurley. There's water influencers. Do you know that that's a thing? Just Trying water different pro. water and they rate water. They're like rating burritos. <laughs> Kind of like raining burritos, but water. I don't even know what to think about it. But, yeah. Just enjoy the burrito. <laughs> it's okay, we'll talk about it later. Yeah.